Here we have a crucial SSD drive that came in for data recovery and the drive looks something like this. This one is model MX500. I have a video that I uploaded about maybe about a year ago, about eight months ago, the same exact model. And the problem with that drive was a shorted capacitor. I do not know if the same holds true here. SSD drives can fail for a couple of reasons. Either we have a faulty capacitor, inductor, diode, resistor, or the drive can fail because of a faulty controller chip, a faulty NAND chip, or it could be that you're not able to read from the drive because of a software-related issue, a corrupt NAND chip, in which case you should be able to recover data by using software. But we do not know what's going on here. Just a quick visual inspection to see if there's anything obvious or anything stands out as being faulty. Slight discoloration here, but that may be nothing. We got to measure. But for now, just quick visual inspection. Anything under this thermal pad here? No. So it looks like the thermal pad is being shared between two chips because the middle is empty. Nice. Sharing is caring. It may cost the factory two cents more if they put a thermal pad here and a thermal pad here. Why put two thermal pads? Just one and share it. Why spend a lot of money on thermal pads, right? And does this cap look suspicious? Maybe. Okay, so let's do quick measurements. We're going to start from the far end right here and work our way. We can start with those two caps, meter in diode mode. And let's measure this cap here. We do not have a short, and we do not have a short. So far, so good. Look at this. We have a short circuit right here, assuming this is a capacitor. And yes, this component is a capacitor. Short circuit, let's measure in resistance mode. I'm telling you, crucial drives are notorious for shorted caps. Resistance mode, I'm reading what? Two ohms. 2 ohms is not that short, so that may be normal. We'll keep it in mind. Resistance mode, we have 196, that's not a short. And we have 2 ohms, that's not that short. 2 ohms. Let's keep it in ohms because we're going to read a beep in diode mode if the cap is measuring to ohms. Two ohms. Two point four K. We have three ohms. 2.6K, 
So it does not look like we have any shorted caps on the board. Zero point one ohms. That's uh, that short. We have to take into consideration the error margin of the meter that we are using, which is about zero point one, zero point two ohms. So I would say this. Oh, wait a minute. Now it's measuring two point one k. So it's not a short. And what if we measure here? We are running out of options. High reading, and we have a 2.6 kilo ohm reading. What's next? Two point one K and we have thirteen K. And finally we're gonna measure those two. High reading, not a short, and high reading, not a short. What's going on? Are we going to be able to recover data from this drive? I have no idea. All right, so let's go ahead and plug power onto the drive. Let's connect the drive to my desktop. And the reason I want to connect the drive to my desktop is so that we can supply power onto the board. I want to monitor the board under a thermal camera while that board has power on it. Of course, my desktop did not detect the drive. And let's take a look at the thermal camera. And we see something hot on the board. Something is flashing. Two things are flashing. Let me grab my plastic spudger. Do not point with your tweezer or anything like that. You need a plastic spudger. If you do not already have one, you can log into our site, northwishfix.com, and you can order one. They're very cheap, less than a dollar. And you can get all your tools from our site, northwishfix.com. Click on shop, order, check out, pay, and we almost always ship out same day. What do we have here? And if we go under the microscope, look at this. I'm pointing at this cap. Is it possible that this cap is faulty? Sometimes a cap does not have to measure for a short to be faulty. Let's go ahead and measure the cap. We're going to disconnect power from the board. And we're going to measure the cap. Meter in diode mode. Let's go to ohms mode. We have a 6 ohm reading. Not a that short, but a 6 ohm reading. Actually, yeah, one end is 6 ohms and the other end is 0 ohms. So I'm guessing the cap is good. And the second thing that was flashing under the thermal camera was this chip here. Six ohms, six ohms, high number, high number, and high number. So one of the two, either this chip or the cap. We can start with the cap. Let's remove the cap and see if anything changes. Even though the cap is not reading at that short, but the cap may still be faulty. If we remove the cap and it doesn't solve the problem, not a big deal, we can put it back and then we can proceed to removing the chip. Just like that. Only took a second. That's why I do not hesitate to remove components because it's easier to remove the component and check rather than spend a lot of time troubleshooting. Just remove and see. Remove and check. Remove and check. 
I do not want to lose it, so let's see if we can solder it on this pad here. And now we're going to try to plug the drive again. And it doesn't look like anything changed. Let's use our thermal camera again. And now we do not have a flashing capacitor anymore and we do not have a flashing chip anymore. But this one is getting hot. And what's this? That's either the controller chip or the NAND chip. So, so the chip that was flashing here is no longer flashing and the cap that we removed is no longer flashing. So is that a good indication that something positive happened? The computer is not able to see the drive still. Hmm, interesting. Maybe I missed it. Let me check my desktop quick. Yeah, I do not see it. Something is happening. No, nothing. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Something is happening. Something is happening. You see the green bar on top. I'll try to read that drive on an Apple machine. But first, let's wait. Maybe we get a positive outcome on a Windows machine. I do see drive E showing up. But I'm not able to read from it. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Right here, right here, I got it. You see that blue drive? I just want to be able to click on it and see the files, but the computer is thinking. Wow, right here, wow. <laughs> we did it. We did it. Look at this, I'm able to read the files. That was amazing. That was amazing. If it wasn't for the thermal camera, it would have been impossible to pinpoint the problem. The capacitor was measuring 6 ohms. Most of the caps on the board were measuring 2 ohms, 6 ohms, 7 ohms. So it would have been impossible to pinpoint the fault. We noticed a flashing component on both the IC and the capacitor. We took an educated guess and we went for the capacitor. And we are now able to read the files. We're going to start the backup process and we're going to back up the files to either a flash drive or another hard drive, invoice and mail the drive back to the customer. We're not going to mail this original drive back to the customer. What if the mailman loses the drive? Then what? Then the customer is going to lose the drive, he's going to lose the files, and then he's going to complain about the $60 million worth of content on that drive. And you do not want to go that route. We keep this one and we mail the customer the backup drive. That's it. We're going to end the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll do something else in the next video.